Hi everyone. When you look at an array, it's pretty predictable. There's an arrangement to the items in there, and that arrangement is often based on the order in which you added items to the array in the first place. That's great, and for most situations, that's what you want. But there will be times though, when you want to do something kind of clever and random and variable. There will be times when I shuffle the contents of your array. And in this video, we'll learn all about that by looking at a very popular way that's been done for literally decades. So let's get started. What we have here is a pretty boring array. We have nine numbers that start from one, go through nine, nothing too exciting going on here. Now, when I say we want to shuffle the contents of our array, here's what I mean. Well, the contents of our array are still the same. You know, the same nine numbers are still there. Now, what is different though, is the position each array item is in. So what we started off with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What we ended up with after doing the shuffling is five, eight, six, nine, one, seven, three, two, four. And I'm pretty sure for that shuffling operation one more time, the arrangement of numbers you see will be different again. And so we could look at the code, we can start diving into the technical details as part of seeing how this code works. But I think it'd be beneficial though, if we took a step back and start at the very beginning and try to get a much deeper conceptual and visual understanding of how our shuffling algorithm works. Because I feel like once we get that level of understanding of what's happening, the code will just make more sense and what's going on, all the individual steps that are going on will be much clearer, much clearer. Clearer, clear? Ah, it's okay, you know, English is like my third language, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna skip that part. And so let's go back to what we have here, which is our array, as we started off with. Now, the way this algorithm works is that we don't start from the beginning, we start from the end instead. So we start at the very last item and we mark it you know, with like, you know, here's our starting point. In this case, it's gonna be nine. And the next step is we need to pick a random number. And that random number is picked from the number, from where you are right now, your starting point, all the way to the beginning of the array. And since we're just starting off this whole journey, we are the random number we pick from one to nine and anything else that could be in between. And so the random number that we chose in this case is four. Four was randomly selected. And after we make our random selection, the next step is a swap. We swap the positions of where our array is currently and with the random number we selected. So what was nine is now four, what was four is now nine. So this is the, the first operation, you know, if you look at end to end, in terms of our array shuffling, making progress. So we finish one iteration of this operation. The next step is we move over by one position at the end. You know, we were done with the last number and now we're at the second to last number, in which case it is the eight. And the pattern we kind of looked at is going to be repeating itself. The next step is to pick a random number and the range we pick the random number from is the first item up to the current item we're at, which is the second to last item. Notice the last item we had earlier is no longer included as part of picking a random number. We, in each step, we have a smaller and smaller range of numbers to go from and pick a random number as part of it. And so we have the, the a random range selected. The random number is two. That's the number we picked. And guess what's gonna be the next step? Now we have a random number and our current position. We swap them. And so now the eight goes to where the two was, and the two goes to where the eight was earlier. And as you can imagine, those steps will continue until we reach the beginning of our array, until the range of numbers we have to pick a random number from is essentially one. And that's really it. That's essentially all our array does. It starts at the very end, you pick a random number, and then you swap, then you move over by one position at the end, you pick a random number, swap, move over, pick a random number, swap, and it just keeps repeating until you have no more items left. Now, now it's a good time for us to look at the code. And so you can click on the description for the written tutorial at the bottom of the video, and that'll give you the code you can copy and paste, or another easy approach, just go to Google, type in Krupa Shuffling Array, and the first item will be the one that is about the JavaScript implementation that we're going to be looking at. And don't click on the one that is all about Flash, unless you really want to learn how to do it in ActionScript, which you might if you want to take a trip down memory lane or learn something completely bizarre if you were never into that the Flash and ActionScript scene back in the day. But I'm digressing. The code that we're going to be looking at can be found in the Shuffling Array in JavaScript tutorial. And so let's go and look at the code. What we have here is the code form of all the images we saw in the previous slides. We have our array prototype, which I'm extending with the function I'm calling shuffle. And the way we use this shuffle is by, you know, here we have our array, temp array, and its contents are probably very familiar to you right now. It's the numbers one through nine as individual array items. And the way to shuffle these contents is I just call the array 
and call the shuffle method on top of it and then to where to preview it on the you know if I were to preview it in the browser and I print the values of it out the items will be very very different in fact let's go to the browser and take a look at how this all looks so I'm going to type in temporary and type in dot shuffle and you'll see that numbers are now six two five three seven four eight one nine if I call it one more time you'll see the numbers are different yet again and every single time I call the shuffle method you can imagine the numbers will be in a slightly different order because there's no real rhyme or reason, in, at least on a normal human level, for the random functions that we're using to get the random positions as part of the swapping. Let's go back to our code. So the way our shuffling works is, here is our for loop. I'm not using for each or for of or for in. I'm just using a regular for loop. I'm starting at let i equals, and notice the value I'm starting off with. It's not zero. It's input.length minus one. And before I get there, input is the value that is actually passed in as part of the shuffle function. In this case, when we have temporary.shuffle, as part of calling shuffle, the contents of temporary are what are gonna be referenced by the this variable, which I'm storing as input just to make it a little easier to reference. So let's go back to our for loop. And in this case, we're starting at the very end, so input.length minus one. And then we keep looping until we get to the very beginning, which is gonna be represented by i being greater than or equal to zero. And then we, instead of going i plus plus, we're actually decrementing so we're going backwards. So this loop really sets us up for starting at the end and at each step going all the way back to the, the beginning. So the first thing I'm doing is that I have a variable called random index. And with this random index, I'm picking a value that is the random number from where we are currently, the position of, you know, stored by i, and then the very beginning of our array. And then the item at index is the position, you know, the index value is just the position in our array. The item at index is a value for that position, so it's input and then bracket random index. So here's the point where we are actually choosing the actual value that we want to hook into as a random item we've identified. And the next item is just a swap. And so item input random index is the item we are in, you know, we randomly chose. Input i is the current item as defined by our array, you know, because we're starting from the very end this would be stored, this would basically be the number nine because that's the, that's the last item we have there. So we swap it with, you know, we specify that the that number nine is not gonna be whatever is the random position that's stored by the, by the random index. And then we do the swap the other way around where we say input i, the very last item, is the value that is at item at index. So it's basically a, ki a case where we first get a pointer to the last item or the current item they're currently at. We have a reference to the, the, the randomly picked item and we swap them, to swap their positions. And then what we return is, no, we don't return actually. And then this, once this, these lines end, we finish one iteration of our loop and then i goes down by one. So instead of it being the last number, it goes the second to last number. And then this whole three steps of being able to choose your new current position, picking a random item and swapping keeps repeating until you get to the very end of our array. And by the time you get there, the what we return is a newly shuffled array. And that's what you're seeing in the browser as part of us calling temp array.shuffle every single time. Now this approach does actually modify the contents of our source array. If you want to have a new array being generated, you can easily do so by just creating a new array. And instead of modifying your input itself, you're modifying the copy of that in the new array. So that way your original contents are always unmodified and what gets returned is going to be a new array with the randomly shuffled contents. So pretty straightforward, right? All right, you just finished learning how to shuffle the contents of an array. In the example we looked at, it focused on a simple array containing just numbers as values. Our array's contents can be anything though. Numbers are just easier to visualize and track, so I used them. So don't feel like you have to only use numbers to take advantage of the shuffling approach we looked at here. The world of shuffling algorithms is quite interesting and, well, interesting if you're into that kind of stuff because there are many ways to shuffle the contents of an array. A lot of people have done a lot of work over many decades documenting those ways. And the approach we looked at here, the, the Fisher, Yates, and Newt approach described as just one of the more popular and efficient ways. So if you find something really clever and cool, feel free to comment below and let me know so I can take a look at it and maybe record a video about that approach in the future. If you have any questions, post in the forums at forum.crypto.com where I and others will be more than happy to help you out very, very quickly. And if you have any cool shuffling algorithm questions or other approaches you found as well, share them here. You know, the discussions here would be quite interesting to see where it leads to. 
If you like this video and the way the information is presented, the pacing and so on, tell your friends and enemies all about it. The more people know about how to shuffle an array, the less boring arrays we'll have to deal with in the real world. Hit subscribe to be notified of new videos that I post to this channel. Follow me at group on Twitter and Facebook for small updates on web development topics. And you might even see the occasional picture of Pixel, the cat that you've been seeing in the background for a lot of these shots. And lastly, there's a book form of all the material you've been seeing here and then some. It's called Arrays from Noob to Ninja. And it's available in paperback and Kindle in color and black and white editions. So click out the link at the bottom of the video and learn more about it and even buy it. It'll be a cool gift to give to someone, especially if they don't really like you. I, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. The book is a great gift for everybody, even people you like, even people you don't like. So buy the book. And with that, I will see you all next time.